Right, so here we go, let's get up Blender. And we're just going to show you how to make rocket flames and jet exhausts. So I'll get rid of the default cube and um, I'm going to go to a file where I've already got a low polygon version of Eurofighter that I did for a previous project. So to save a bit of time I'm going to use that. Uh, typhoon object, yeah, and it's still called cube. That's naughty of me. I'll rename that in a minute. Right, now since it's come from a file where there's some animation going on, it's not centered and it's pointing every which way, so what we need to do is to set the rotations back to zero and uh, get it back to the middle of the grid. Okay. All right, zero out all the rotations. That's that. Get it back to the middle of the grid. Oh, I'm a dummy, aren't I? Well, it just goes to show that doing it this way won't work at all. <laughs> 3D is very deceptive. <coughs> so, I should have remembered that uh, I can snap things to the cursor, and since I haven't moved the cursor, the cursor's in the middle. That's better. Right. So, here's my very low polygon Eurofighter model. Didn't take me long to make, but it's designed for viewing at a distance, not sort of right up in your face like this. As you can see, there's a hole at the back, uh, no jet flame. So that's what the tutorial is today. It's about adding a jet flame. And it's not just any old jet flame. It's one that will move as you move the model and it will change its shape a bit and its colour a bit. The first thing I'm doing is just a bit of tiddling around with the materials because I know from experience with this model that I need to change them a bit. Um, that original light colour that it was, the light green, is actually the colour that your fighter is. And I was a bit sceptical about it, but when I modelled it and put it up in the sky, you can't actually see the damn thing. So um, it needs to be a bit darker. Right, and turn the mirroring off on the cockpit. That will help us render a bit quicker. Okay. Now the next thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to add an object that's going to be the flame. Now, this is actually easier than it would at first appear. Because what we want is a kind of conical shape, but we don't want a cone. We want something with curves. And with a bit of experimentation, I found that the absolute best thing for that is an icosphere. So I'm going to add that. I'm going to set the subdivisions up to 4 to give us some vertexes to play with or vertices I should say and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to scale it to the approximate size and shape that we need so I'm going to elongate it and flatten it and generally make it a long sort of conical thing rather than a sphere I've got a bit too enthusiastic there yeah, that sort of shape. Okay. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to remove half of it because we only want half of it. Um, be a bit odd if the flame was just an oval shape. So um, I'm going to use the go into edit mode. I'm going to use the uh, C command. It gives me a little circle I can use to select things with. And I'm going to select some. Oh, yes. Very good. I'm going to select the wrong side. <laughs> it's the other side of the flame that we actually want to keep. So um, <clears throat> let's just select the side of the flame we want to delete rather than the side we want to keep. That's better. Get rid of the vertices. Press escape and X and vertices. And get rid of the ones on the other side of the object. Press escape. And X vertices, there you go. 
And we've got a few little bits left. So we'll select those and get rid of those. Good. So now we've got a sort of hollow conical thing. Um, now we want we want to make it some flames. And the way we do that is we'll delete some more vertices and we'll use the C command again. But um, this time by using the scroll key in the middle of your mouse, if you've got a wheel mouse, don't ask me how you do it if you don't, um, we're going to change the size of the select circle. We're going to make it small like that. Right, so what we're going to do is draw a slightly wobbly line and we're going to delete those vertices. There. As you can see, we've got a thing with holes in. And we're going to do the same with the bottom. We're going to draw a bit of a wobbly line. And this is just to make some flame shapes. Just to give the whole process a, a shape to start with. It's, it's kind of roughly what we want. Um, yeah, we'll do a bit more on the top. Great. Okay, that should do us. So you can see we've got quite a nice few jagged edges there. And that's exactly what we want. And eventually those jagged edges are going to be animated by a texture. And they'll wave around and flap about in the breeze. And look quite realistic. And it'll do it all by itself. You don't have to do anything. So, next thing to do is to get it more precisely to size and position it correctly. go and pull it back a bit I think it's a bit too deep actually so mm, yeah let's scale it down a bit actually right S for scale mm -hmm. okay and now we'll use the scale handles and we'll drop the size of it vertically and horizontally until it seems to fit the hole. Oh, that's looking pretty good. Okay. So, it needs moving backwards a little bit, I think, and upwards. Upwards and backwards. Even. There you go. Now you can see you've got the curve as it comes out of the jet nozzle as the gases expand. Much better. Let's put some material on it. Alright, we'll make a new material. We're not interested in diffuse intensity. That goes right down. Specular intensity, that goes right down. It's a flame, so light doesn't bounce off it. However, what it does is it emits light. And I'm going to set emit to 2. And we're going to make it transparent so you can see through it, because you can normally see through flames. Mm, might need to go a bit lower than that, but we'll see. We're going to make it colour. Make it any colour you want. A nice pretty orange flame. But so I've got a thing for blue with jet flames. It's more realistic. Um, jet flames tend to go blue when they're operating at high efficiency. And the EFAS are Euro, Eurofighters are high efficiency engines, supposedly. Um, now... As you can see at the moment, it's not actually attached to the plane. So that's the next thing we want to do. We want to attach it to the to the aircraft. We'll merge them and make them one item. And the thing to do is to select the flame first, then the aircraft. Hit join. And then the flame is attached to the aircraft and not the aircraft to the flame. And as you can see, the whole thing moves around as one. That's great. Now what we're going to do... Yes, we'll rename the material so it says flame. Much better. And uh, I'll put a texture on it. Now we're going to use two textures on the flame. One of them, this first one, is um, going to be used to change the colour. And Voronoi is one that I use with flames quite a bit because it seems to work quite well. Um, 
and this is just going to give a little bit of color variation to the flame um, we don't want a hundred percent color variation by any means um, something like I don't know, 0 0.1 or 0 0.2 and the color wants to be something that goes with our flame it's sort of a so yeah not quite as purple as it was something like that um, now a bit of a word about the preview um, now different installations of blender on different machines with different graphic cards seem to work differently uh, oh you see what I'm doing at the moment I'm just setting the uh, coordinates to global that's very important and uh, the actual projection to sphere now this is the preview I was talking about and it's not very accurate um, you can change things around quite a bit and the preview doesn't seem to change all that much and what you see in your scene when you render it will change a great deal as you can see I've changed the size of that texture a huge amount and nothing actually happens to the preview image and it's not because the intensity is too low. If you were to turn that colour intensity right the way up, say to 0.6, there we go. And you see that the colour of the overall thing's changed a bit, but there's no real patterning on it. And whether that's something that happens just because of my installation or not, I don't know. But uh, I have come across people with the same problem. Uh, when you render it, it's fine, it comes out okay. It just seems whatever you're doing here, it doesn't actually affect that preview. So here we go, we'll render it. And there you go, you can see that there's some colour variation in the flame. And it just doesn't look all flat anymore. And that's really good. That's exactly the sort of thing we want. So we'll kind of leave that alone. In fact, I might actually make that a bit more transparent. Um, yeah, that's probably a good idea. Make that a bit more transparent. So already you see you're starting to get something that looks a bit like a jet flame. Um, the next one looks slightly more like a gas flame. There we go. That's a bit better. And you can see that complicated shape with all those vertices in it really does help to create the illusion. Now our next texture um, don't want to do that. Let's go to textures, come on. Our next texture is actually going to uh, really hot things up a bit because what it's going to do is it's going to put swirls in that flame. And those swirls will move as the Eurofighter moves. And this is the entire purpose of having a global um, coordinate system. And I'll show you that in a minute when we do a trial animation. So here's the texture I'm going to use. It's um, the clouds one. And I'm going to make it a hard one. Um, because I want quite a lot of ripple in it. And we're going to make it affect just displacement. Okay, and you can whack that displacement out a fair old way if you want to. I've got 0.2 at the moment. You can see it's, it's yeah, it's a few little waves and wriggles down the end there, but it's nowhere near what it should be. Um, set it to spherical and global, which I forgot to do. How nice! Turn up the displacement to about 0.5 ish and. Yeah, that's better. You see that. Now as the plane moves, it'll move over the top of that texture and the texture will stay still. So those waves will travel down the flame, just as they would if it was a real jet fighter. Oh, I quite like that, you know. Hmm. Okay. Right, so what I'm going to do is I'll just do a few minor changes to the scene to make it look a bit better um, <laughs> not for any reason other than I suppose other than I don't really want to show you a scene that isn't lit um, 
what we're going to do is we're just going to do a quick trial animation because as you can see even if I turn on texture it doesn't actually show that effect um, so you actually need to do a quick trial animation like this just one that's going to take a few minutes to render um, and all we're going to do is we're going to animate it moving from one side of the screen to the other um, just so we can see that the flame modifies itself and it modifies itself by an exception, acceptable amount now if, if you were to duplicate this URF fighter several times or use it as a particle um, which you can do um, which is how I did my earlier video um, then each Eurofighter, because it's in a different place on the screen, will have a different flame. Aha! <laughs> so, um, and that's automatic. So, that's a really good reason for using the object, the, um, sorry, the, the global coordinate system for the textures. Okay, so we'll change the lighting. Use a hemi, make sure it's pointed at our plane. Pointed roughly in the right direction. Yeah, something like that. Make a bit higher. Get a nice glint off the cockpit. See, look at this. You can tell I'm a perfectionist in some ways. Right, and we'll put a sky on it so that it looks, yeah, so it looks as if it's flying through the sky. We'll just a simple blend sky in the world like so that could be a bit long it will do a test render and and see I'm not sure if the jet flame is going to show up against it hello we're oh we're at the right hand side aha uh -huh. doesn't show up very well okay well what we'll do is we'll dim down that horizon color a bit and then we'll do our test animation and you can see what it's like um, while we're doing the test animation I'll show you a couple of other little tips that I've picked up along the way so here we are test animation you can see the waves on the exhaust actually move down the exhaust as the jet moves and you have to remember obviously this is 25 frames a second so your eyes just going to see a blur of movement exactly as it would do from a real jet flame. Now here's one of the little tips that I will say. You can actually, while it's animating, with one of these little test animations, you can actually change the parameters and see them change in the animation. So let's say we want to change the colour. Um, where are we? Ether. I've got lamp selected at the moment, that's no good. So I'll make no materials on that. Right, here we go. So let's change that specular colour. Let's go to the orange or something. And bang. You see, that's what a flame that's that colour would look like. And that's actually quite good, but now nah, I prefer the blue, sorry. Let's put it back roughly to what it was again. There we go. Or how about turning up the amount of kinkiness that the texture's producing with the flame. We can do that as well and see what that would look like. So all the way up to 0.9. Bang. Hmm. Not bad. And you can see that the amount of wobble in the flame has gone up dramatically so by changing the textures changing the uh, numbers and changing the colors you see you can get a really large variety of jet exhausts and rocket flame effects that's all for